Menachem, I'm fascinated, obsessed, some would say, with questions of the universe and brain mind and is there a God? But, you know, more fundamental than, than any of those questions is how, how do we know what we know? How can we be confident? And it, this is, of course, the whole area of epistemology and philosophy. Uh, you're a, uh, a philosopher of science, a historian of science. And from that perspective, uh, how do you view epistemology? Well, this this is a... This is a large topic, <laughs> um, and uh, and epistemology has a, a very interesting history, which which I don't want to go into. I think I think we should we should we should we should kick off from um, I think the most fundamental understanding of latter day philosophy, and that is that we do not know by our eyes or by our ears but by means of the words we speak. The, the old idea of empiricism carries with it an unfounded assumption that the world talks to us, <laughs> that the stimuli of our nerve endings carries content. No, I, I do not believe in that. There are people who do. They have a very, very tough job of talking about what they call the qualia. We, we shan't get into that, but of, 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 of those little bits and pieces of content that it carried down our, mm -hmm. uh, uh, our nerves, mm -hmm. you know, optical nerve and so on and so on. I, I, I firmly disbelieve that. Mm -hmm. We are stimulated by the world. The world impacts on us in a causal manner. Okay, through, you know, all our senses. But the content imparted on those stimuli is a reading in of the mind. Mm. It's imparted by the mind. And what we can know, um, how we know is by means of our conceptualization, um, instinctive or deliberate, that doesn't matter. But, but, but you know, sitting in the command room of our minds with the inner eye and looking, looking out. We, we don't look out of the windows of our, our eyes. Everything happens within the head, right? So sitting back on that armchair in, in, in uh, you know, the command console and, si and, and seeing on the screen the world that we experience all that data has already been, uh, uh, been, been fashioned and conceptualized uh, uh, by our minds in ways that we do not govern. Knowing, okay, th this is sensing. Knowing is, is to render explicit those conceptualizations. In other words, to take stock explicitly of, hmm, that's a horse. Ha! Huh. I'm talking to an interviewer, and so on and so forth. Okay? Now, so what, what we can know, not what we can feel, what we can know is a function of the language, of the conceptual schemes, the concepts with, by which we conceptualize. Now, there are two theories about concepts. One theory is that a concept gets its meaning from what it represents. Okay, that's the represent mm -hmm. representational model. The other take, which uh, I am party to, is if you look in a dictionary, words are explained by other words. And, and, and what the conceptual scheme, the vocabulary at our disposal by which we, by which we experience and by which we, by which we know, that vocabulary is, is inferentially, I'm using Robert Brandom's term now, inferentially connected. In other words, if this point is, is north of that, then that point mm -hmm. is south of that. That's about the meaning of the words. This isn't mm -hmm. an empirical fact. This is, this is about how these concepts relate to each other. So the limit of what we can know, or the limits of what we can know, as, or the limits of our world, if you wish, as Wittgenstein put it, is the limits of our language. Now, the, the intriguing thing about bringing language into epistemology, of course, is that you can only know something new by means of old words. 
Okay, if you invent a new term, it's just a tag, it's not a concept. Now, like every person here in the studio, you are totally unique. But the only way I can account, like every, like every person, but the only way I can account for your uniqueness is by means of a set of concepts by which you are likened to <laughs> others. Okay, and it's, it's, it's the combination of those that renders uh, uh, Robert Kuhn the unique person he is. So, our work, we know by means of using a concept, using a concept is to liken what we see to something else. So concepts are little mm. metaphors, if you wish, a little, little class Names. What prevents you from cascading into skepticism where we can't know anything because everything's related to something else. I have no foundation. I have no foundation between what I believe and what the world really is. And so how do I know anything? Well, define no. I mean, what, what you're saying now is that we should be skeptical about knowing for sure about how th things stand in themselves, not how things are experienced by us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, how things are experienced by us is already, is already uh, 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 language informed or concept informed. This is Kant's great lesson. And, and, and we, we know pretty much about the self we experience and the world we experience and the world we find ourselves living in. Do we know things in themselves? God knows. <laughs> okay? Uh, but but that, sh that shouldn't bring despair. We, it, I mean, it is a slightly claustrophobic thought that we're not looking out of our eyes, but, but you know, uh, watching things happening in our brains and that we never escape from the confines of our skulls, so to speak. But, um, but having said that, skepticism, not total, not, not meltdown skepticism, but uh, skepticism is a very good attitude to be wary, you know, if we've got it right, Got it right according to our standards, there are no other standards.